Let's begin with a new segment, sure to win your hearts and minds over the next few years. On the radio. Broadcasting from the iconic 299 Queen Street West. Good morning. This is Virgin Mornings. Radiated through faith. With Adam Wilde and TJ. Your new morning show. Morning show. We like to be as boring as possible, so I want to read out the most boring tweet that I think you still need to know this morning, okay? You ready? It's a great start. This comes from at T-O underscore Winter Ops, Toronto Winter Operations. In response to some light freezing drizzle, salt trucks have been out since approximately 1 a.m. Salting will continue throughout the a.m. rush hour. Please drive according to conditions. I mean, you're enlightened, but it's also pretty boring. A little bit boring. Yeah. Also, shout out snowplow and and salt truck drivers. Oh, man. Unsung heroes. They're having a good winter this year, though. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's it's okay. Yeah. Uh, This weekend, apparently, is going to get rough. So it's... um, Anyway, good morning, guys. Um, Let's go around the room. PJ, what's on your mind? For weeks, what have I said I'm not going to do? Download Bumble? Or Tinder. Yeah. Guess what I did last night? You didn't. I did. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you did. I fell off the wagon. I was so shamed. I don't know why. Because even so yesterday, good. before we left the station, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not downloading that app again. What was it that brought you back? I don't know. Cooking dinner for one again, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, what's happening? For days, Adam Wilde has been saying the snow is coming. <laughs> yes, thank and you. this is the time he will be wrong again. You think this weekend we're not going to get the 15 centimeters? It's not coming. For? You don't think not it's coming? coming at him. If you there think are zero? zero? Zero. We'll get some light flurries like usual. But that's and zero. And then nothing. If there are 100 Adam Wilds in a room and they're all saying it's going to snow, there's a 99% chance that it won't. That's how that, that <laughs> Lady Gaga quote, right? It. I think yeah, that's okay. how it works, Lady Gaga. Okay, so <laughs> today... I forgot to, well, yesterday, I was going to, I was driving home, and I, I, you know when you know you're forgetting, forgetting something? Yeah. And you get home, and you feel this guilt, and you're like, I should go back out. There's something I've forgotten. Woke up this morning, coffee. So I Ubered coffee to the radio station. Oh, wow. I have two large McDonald's coffees, two creams. Cost me eight bucks. <laughs> For two coffees! <laughs> this is very expensive. Did you tip? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, so it was actually ten dollars. Because I got roasted for this the other week. Oh, for not tipping? For not tipping. Oh, no. You got to tip them. Especially if they're out working now. It's funny that you got roasted over coffee. Oh, shut up. (laughs) Virgin Mornings. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. We're number one. We're number one. What? Bed bugs. Oh. Toronto just got named the worst city in our country for having bed bugs. We did it. Yeah. You know what? To be honest, we do have the biggest population by a long long margin so i mean it sort of makes sense that we would have the most right oh it makes sense it doesn't make it cool no it sucks that sucks apparently they're really hard to get rid of too i've never had them but yeah i I had them in calgary it's a nightmare what do you have to do you have to like wash all of your stuff you have to have somebody come in like you can't just ignore the problem you have to do things about it oh i hate having i'm not even gonna go down the checklist of what i did because i'm really worried somebody will text us at triple nine double nine and be like uh you didn't do this very important (laughs) step and then i'll be like oh great i've had bed bug infestation for the last few years and i've just been ignoring it uh it's been a few months since the last iphone came out which means it's time to start speculating about the next iphone coming out uh, an article online says that they're changing the charging cords now. Oh, great. They're going to make it the same as the Samsung Galaxy S9. Also, rumors that there's going to be... Is there wireless charging now, or is that a thing that's coming? There is? Okay. So Producer then Jesse's the uh, the Apple nerd, and he just gave us a thumbs, thumbs up. Okay, well, that sounds like something I definitely should have known, but they are <laughs> changing the cord. Do you remember when they changed the headphone jack and everyone lost their mind? Yeah, and they, they don't even have one now, right? No. I don't think so. That's no. why everyone has AirPods. Again, producer Jesse shaking his head now. Yeah. Do you work for Apple? Do you have shares <laughs> in that company? Every time oh, I man. threaten to not buy an Apple phone, he looks at me like so disappointed. Like your parents, like I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> like, and, and don't kid yourself. You're definitely going to get an iPhone. He puts his hand on your shoulder. And he's like, are things okay? Do you need me to help you get this phone? <laughs> That's true. Last week, we were talking about how there was a rumor that nobody would be hosting the Grammys. Well, that is a rumor no more. It sounds like Alicia Keys will be hosting. Oh, cool. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. You know, the thing with the Grammys is that the the host is never really the star. Like, the Oscars, everybody makes a big deal of the host. No one talks about the host for the Grammys. You know, it was LL Cool J for, like, five years. That was the thing. You brought that up, too, and I was like, oh, that's a thing I know now, and I didn't know before. Bingo. Yeah. Just yeah. like iPhones, I have no knowledge of <laughs> Grammy hosts. That's what's trending, I'm TJ. So, we want to get you to a beach. It's going to go down to minus 13 tonight. 
I know a place where it's plus 25 this morning, and that's Antigua. So if you want to be at the wild party on Pineapple Beach, we will hook you up with the code word at 7 o'clock this morning on Virgin Mornings. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. Here's an interesting tweet. In response to some light freezing drizzle, salt trucks have been out since approximately 1 a.m. Salting will continue throughout the rush hour. Please drive according to the conditions. Thank you, Toronto Winter Operations on Twitter. That's verified. Did they throw a gif in there at least? No. Uh, no, they're the very, problem. yeah. It's one, of those, it's one of those accounts that you're like, I sure hope CP24 retweets that account so I don't have to follow them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so anyway, it is slippery outside. Watch it when you're walking. Watch it when you're driving. I know I know. we, we say this every time there's some bad weather, but like, seriously, take it easy. Also, shout out to the, uh, the salt truck drivers. Ser- Been up Who, all night. Since 1 a.m. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. A 99.9 Virgin Radio. So a bit of a tough conundrum, and I'm hoping you can help me out if you've been through it. And actually, even if you haven't, I want to know what you would do in this situation. You have the opportunity to find out whether your kid's going to be a boy or a girl. And we are, my wife and I are three days away from that. Friday, we will be able to find out. And you still haven't made the the full decision whether or not you want to do it. And we've gone back and forth because I guess the thing in the 80s when I was born was that people didn't want to know. It was like, ooh, the big surprise the day they were born. So my parents had no idea, although my mom swears that she knew I was a boy. I think she might be fibbing on that one. Um, I don't think my, my wife's parents knew. And she was the fourth child. And so I'm trying to figure out Is there any benefit to doing one over the other? So I'm like looking at it from like a strategic perspective. And is there like a fun benefit to finding out the day of? Or is it like, oh my God, now I have to go buy clothes for this or this? or You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Chloe texted us from triple nine, double nine. We found out the sex had a gender reveal party, baby showers, three ultrasounds. Said it was a boy. Baby was born. It's a girl. No! That can happen? That's a thing that can happen. No way! Okay, they didn't tell us that at the hospital. They wouldn't. Why would they? Hey, we might make a mistake. Hey, we're Mount Sinai. Nope. (laughs) Anyway, trust us. (laughs) That's crazy. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Hey, 416-87-299-99. Jeff, what about you, buddy? We have two kids under the age of two. So for our first one, obviously it's different with your second, but for your first kid... Uh, we wanted to do a gender reveal party, which a lot of people like to do. So they would uh, they would bring a friend with them, and the doctor would tell the friend and write it down on a piece of paper. And then we would do like an egg smashing thing, and uh, the, the gender of the baby would be the hard egg. Um, oh. So when we got to the doctor, and they're like, "Do you guys know the gender?" and we're like, uh, "No, but we wanted to do a gender reveal party." But then in the moment, you you want to know so bad, where we were just like. I actually was like, I don't want to know, but my wife was like, oh, come on, we gotta, we gotta know, so we gotta. <laughs> so she buckled. Yeah. And then we told everybody we already had this party planned, and then last minute we're like, hey guys, so we're actually just gonna have a party because it was a boy, and we kind of <laughs> ruined the whole thing. But <laughs> I honestly feel like your wife and my wife are the exact same, man. It's so hard in the moment to say no and and like write it down for us and we're going to give it to somebody you know what i mean in that moment you want to know it's so bad plus now you have a whole bunch of eggs that you can make so it all worked out (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. who doesn't like a good breakfast at any meal right this is virgin mornings with adam wilde and tj on 99.9 virgin radio you got the chance to find out the gender of your baby four months before it's born i mean you could find out earlier apparently but then they're not as accurate so they're saying this is the most accurate time. Do you take that? Do you, do, you, do you find out or do you want it to be a surprise? And that's what my wife Caprice and I are in right now. We don't, I, I just don't know. Like, I straight up don't know. Does she have an idea what she wants to do? Um, she doesn't either. Like, it's we're usually people that make a decision and go with it. Yeah. Neither of us can. We're just stuck on this. It's like, well, it could be fun to find out the day of, but there's a lot of planning inv- involved and you can, you know, paint the baby room and get the right, you know, color clothes so people know what... <laughs> Whether you have a boy or a girl, I guess, when you when you were out with them in the stroller. I remember when I rescued a cat, which is basically the same thing. <laughs> I was having a hard time deciding, ah, oh, do I want to rescue a guy cat or a girl cat? So I know what you're going through. You know, TJ, I'm so glad you could relate. Now, we uh, we wanted to call Destiny back. Destiny text messaged us. Because after four ultrasounds, she still might not know. Destiny, tell us what happened. So it all started when I was 14 weeks. I went to one of those peekaboo 3D ultrasounds. Okay. And that's a little that's a little bit early to go. But and then I had another one um, around 15 weeks. 
and they confirmed it was a boy as well. And then again, I had an anatomy scan at McMaster, and they said, it's a boy, congratulations. I was like, thank you. I did my gender reveal on Facebook, and I waited until my anatomy scan for that reason so that I could be sure. So then I get my gender reveal all out on Facebook, and a week later, McMaster called me and asked me if I could come back in, and when I was there, the lady asked me if I knew the gender. I said yes, and she confirmed that it was a girl. <laughs> and I was like, no, <laughs> sorry, you're wrong. It's a boy. It's been confirmed three times. And she said, well, where did you get it confirmed? And I started with the peekaboo, and she's like, oh, well, you can't base it on that. And I said, but also a week ago here at this hospital, <laughs> confirmed. And it turns out their theory is that the umbilical cord was in between the legs for three ultrasounds, which is like unheard of. Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. Destiny, and, did you end up yeah. having to put up another post on Facebook? I did. And I wrote, just kidding. This beauty, <laughs> uh, this, and I people said, on your kidding. Facebook are like, oh, that Destiny, she's <laughs> such a prankster. Everyone was like, oh, this is just your loss. So next time I, I probably will hold off and just wait until... Only post it on Instagram, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the call, Destiny. Hey, Adam, I have an idea of what you can actually do. Let's hear it. Because your wife and I love to torment you. <laughs> yeah, that, we is, do. that is true. We both live to torment you. Tell me the gender. <laughs> and only me. And for the next four months, I will make your life a living hell. Well, okay. Are you are you asking me or are you asking my wife who you're assuming is listening right now? I'm going to ask your wife because I know she's going to say yes. <laughs> she's going to find you, that hilarious. You would have to come with, come with us Friday afternoon, though. I'll be there anyway, man. <laughs> I love hanging out at those places. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. I'm going to steal TJ's line from a little bit earlier, but uh, the new iPhone came out, so it's time to start speculating about the new iPhone. Did you ever notice that's always the case? Oh, I hate it. New I iPhone comes out, they're like, yeah, but what about the next one? <laughs> like, well, it'll probably have whatever the Galaxy has right now, because Android users won't stop talking about that. <laughs> anyway. they do. People who don't have an iPhone love to tell you that they don't have an yeah, iPhone. Yeah, it's absolutely. funny. Um, this has been our TED Talk. Thank you. <laughs> so, so what they're saying, what are they saying about the new iPhone? Uh, they're saying, well, they're, not a whole lot, but the big speculation right now is that they're going to change the charging cords to the same as... I, we just brought this up, but the same as the Galaxy S9. Did they say why? Uh, just easier I'm, at parties? I'm sure there's probably some sort of electronic reason. Okay. I don't know. I like that uh, face-to-face charging. You know those phone-to-phone -phone charges that I think it's Huawei has? That doesn't make put, sense They to just me. put your phones together and they charge each other? How often or like how much are your phones supposed to, to, to kiss each other? I don't know. For your phone to get a charge. It doesn't make sense. It's a great way for you to break the ice, though. Absolutely it is. That's DJ, a great call. Single guy. Come on. I'm trying to help you out here. Buy a Huawei phone. One weird thing that they say they're bringing back to, or at least this is the, the, the rumor, and I think everybody's going to collectively hate this, is they want to bring back the iPod. Just the iPod. Just the iPod. Which I can't figure out because no one really... The whole thing with the iPod is when we when we used it, we had a collection of CDs or music that we ripped off of Kazaa or LimeWire at the time. Let's just be honest. And would almost destroy your computer. Yes, absolutely. So many viruses. Yeah. But you would load your, your iPod up with your music. But what would be the point since most people, or at least, you know, everybody's sort of switching to streaming. I'll tell you. Nostalgia. No, it's not like yeah. records. There's no, 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 way. no, no. There's nostalgia because an iPod was your lifeline when you were in high school. It was. I don't know about you, but in my high school, the the cool the cool teen thing to do was to blare music out of your iPod, well, like through your headphones, but from your iPod, and you would just have it super low, uh, loud in your headphones, and then you'd walk between classes, and Ooh. I would listen to like hardcore music, like I would listen to like Under Oath and Silverstein and stuff, and people were like, oh, he's so. He's so, so edgy. He's broody and edgy, or at least yeah. that's what you thought that they were saying? Yeah, they okay. didn't even know who I was. <laughs> so don't. you would get an iPod so you could walk around the hallways here at the lovely Bell Media Studios, and you would, you, you'd you want people to say, he, oh, he's so cool and edgy. He's so dark and edgy. Yeah, that's exactly what I want. Okay. <laughs> Glad we had this talk. Please don't waste your money on this. It's Virgin Radio. <laughs> Virgin Mornings. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. Okay, you're going to have deja vu, and you can't get mad at us if we're wrong. But we might get hit with snow this weekend. They said that about last weekend, and I believe the weekend before. Mm -hmm. So who really knows? There's estimations that we could see upwards of 15 centimeters of snow. 
Or maybe not, because that's what they promised us again these past two weeks, and we got nothing. The, my favorite thing is they always say, and this is the key when you're listening to the weather forecast, upwards or up to 15 yeah. centimeters of snow, which means it could be anywhere from nothing to 15. Yeah. Smart. I mean, you can working never be smarter, wrong. not harder. How can you be wrong? Uh, and just to clarify, too, this is for the city of Toronto. Did you see the new Spider-Man trailer last night for Spider-Man Far From Home? It looks pretty good. It looks really good. It's set for release this summer, July 5th. Everybody's losing their mind about it online. This new Spider-Man, it's Tom Holland, right? Is that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Sorry, I always get confused him with the other. Anyway, he's an excellent Spider-Man. He's really, really good. Absolutely. You got to be kind of that that geeky young guy. That's sort of what you have to be. But he's got a bit of a tood to him, too. Tood to him, too? Yeah. Attitude to him? I'm struggling today, man. It's okay. It's Keep a going. Wednesday for old Tej. Anyway. Uh, did you see the new Gillette commercial? Everyone's talking about it online. It's trying to break down the barriers and, and target male toxic masculinity. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, though. They put out the commercial yesterday. Everybody was praising it. They thought it was great. And then because the internet is the internet, some people started talking crap about it. Of course. Because the internet just likes to go full circle with these things. Well, and, and you know what? When you watch the commercial, it's a very thoughtful look at what we've been told our whole lives is what it is to be a man. And like, I, my favorite scene was the, 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 like, 20 guys lined up at the barbecue in a backyard. And it was like, yeah, like... People, guys are weird about that sort of stuff, and 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 I guess you know not being one of those normal kind of guys. Although I do like to barbecue, um, it it kind of hit me like yeah, like I always felt a little different growing up. I never felt like I fit that mold, like the beer drinking. Uh, you know, I like beer, I like barbecuing, but it's definitely not a part of my personality. No, um, it's not a part of being a man. Um, and I'm glad that they did it. I think it's great. I think every time I talk. It's like breaking down masculinity barriers. <laughs> anyway, that's what's trending. I'm TJ. All right, thanks, buddy. So here's the deal. Wild par- Party, Pineapple Beach. Not only are we going to make the winner call, so if you qualified yesterday, get your phone out. We are also going to get you the code word for today so you can win a trip tomorrow. That is in three minutes on Virgin Mornings with Adam Wild and TJ. Virgin Mornings with Adam Wild and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Are potato chips sexy? Like with other people or when I'm eating a bag by myself on the couch? Because well, I feel pretty sexy when I'm just shoveling I, salt and vinegar chips into my face. I bet you do. I bet you do. I bet that's when you feel peak sexy TJ. I, no. I eat the chips and I just say to myself, I am a king. When you have someone over, you're a single guy. When you have someone over, do you is, is a bowl of potato chips something that you have out? No. No? No. So there's a, a British kettle chip brand called Tyrell's. That wants to change that. And they're coming out with what they're calling an aphrodisiac flavor. (laughs) So it's a honey and chili flavored bag. And they say these two ingredients can have a powerful effect on the body with the honey tinkering with hormone levels and the chili triggering nerve endings on the tongue, releasing endorphins and increasing your heart rate. So they're aphrodisiac sex chips? Yeah. So you can Netflix and chill. And then eat these chips and not chill anymore. I don't listen. Here's the thing: like I'm, I'm married now, so like in, in, you lose the, you lose the whole. Oh, I got to be perfect before things happen, right? Yeah. Like, after the gym, you're like, who cares? Let's go. Yeah. It's the only time we can fit this in. <laughs> but when you're just like just starting to date and you're trying to be perfect and you want your breath to smell minty even after you've eaten dinner, can chips really be sexy? Salty potato breath is that sexy? It's not just that, though, man. It's Have you ever watched yourself eat chips? There's no graceful way to eat chips. You just grab them by the handful and just into your mouth. That's it. Mm -hmm. It gets all over your face. Sometimes it gets in your hair, depending on the length (laughs) of your hair. It's true. It actually does, yeah. How about aphrodisiac Cheetos? I could get on board for that. Well, you're licking your fingers, and that can be... Very sexual. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to... Patent that idea before somebody gets on it. Oh, I'm sure people are just racing to steal that right now. <laughs> Virgin Radio. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Wild pa- Party, Pineapple Beach. If you would like to go, you need to text Speedo and your name to 99999. Again, it is Speedo and then your name to 99999. And we... Might just be able to put you on the Virgin Radio VIP list by the end of the hour. That is heads, your heads up, too. Speedo is spelled S-P-E-E-D-O. Very important. Very important. I know that because I just checked the label on the one that I'm wearing right now. Now, imagine, 
<laughs> Imagine the person you've been waiting on to propose finally does it. Finally. And then that person who just proposed wakes up the next morning and cannot remember doing it. Oof. It's tough sledding. What? We're engaged? That's not a fun conversation. So this happened, at least the guy is saying this happened to him. And I want to know if you believe this story. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to tell you his story, and you're going to play jury. TJ, Jesse, you guys are the first two members of the jury. Producer Jesse, that is. And then we need you to call us at 999 or 416 9999 However you want to reach the station, I want to come to a consensus here. We are the public jury, okay? So okay. what he says happens is he was having trouble sleeping. So he started taking a drug called Ambien, which a lot of people take to get to sleep when they struggle with it. Unfortunately, with Ambien, um, once you go off Ambien, it's hard to sleep again. <laughs> and sometimes you get to the point with Ambien where you're taking a little too much. He was taking 40 milligrams, what he says, of the sleep aid, which is quadruple the recommended dosage. Whoa. Okay. Now, Ambien is the same drug that Roseanne claimed she was on when she tweeted all that racist stuff. People say they do some crazy stuff on Ambien. He said, I had the engagement ring in my drawer, woke up, and she was wearing the ring on her finger and explained to me what happened. And he said, I was shook because I couldn't remember anything. He said, I had not planned on being engaged with my girlfriend for another year, maybe a year and a half. Wouldn't have gotten her, I, and he said, I probably would have got her a better ring too. But Ambien sort of spread up the process, the process. Now, I think there could be two things. First off, could be Ambien. Second, could be cold feet. Which do we think it is? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Ambien because if he already had an engagement ring, regardless if he thought about buying a better one or doing it in a year, year and a half, he still had an engagement ring. It's a little odd to me that, that he, he mentions that he would want a better engagement ring. That's Maybe she just didn't like the engagement ring. Yeah. Like, oh, I probably got you There's something one. to unpack there. Pretty Regardless, though, marry her anyway. Because if you're all hopped up on Ambien and she still says yes <laughs> while you propose to her, lock that down. Are okay. you kidding me? So that's one side. Producer Jesse, what do you think? He's a liar. <laughs> Cold feet? He's, Cold feet. I agree. You know why? The part that got me was he said, I probably wouldn't have done this for another year, year and a half. So it doesn't, it's not, doesn't mean that he doesn't like her. But for him, it might still be a little too early. So I sort of think it's cold feet. Then why do you have the ring? Hmm? Then why does he have the ring? See, well, people are complicated. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that part I cannot even understand. 416-872-9999 or text us at triple nine double nine. You are the jury. What do you think? It's Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. What if you woke up the day after being proposed to and the person who did the proposing said, uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> I don't think that happened. That the sounds like a situation I would somehow walk myself into. <laughs> Does it not? Just hearing the headline of that? Yeah, seriously. So the guy in this situation says he woke up and the ring that he had in his side drawer that he'd been hiding from his girlfriend was on her finger. And she explained to him, hey, you proposed last night. And he was like, I did? Must have been the ambient. Now, I think in this situation, had to be cold feet. Had to be cold feet. Not that he's trying to get out of the engagement. He's not. But I think it happened a little too early for comfort. Otherwise, he wouldn't be bringing it up. TJ, though, you think this, this is real? This could happen? I think it's legit. And we have some text coming in. Triple nine, double nine. Daniel texts us in the 905. I'm with TJ 100%. Why did he have the ring? Also, another great point TJ made. This is why Daniel's my favorite. <laughs> he said, uh, he did it. She, she said yes. Well, he was all doped up. Lock it down. And then we had another text from Catherine from the 905. I believe him too. One time on Ambien, I ordered a replica English phone booth to my house. <laughs> Ambien is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Catherine. Wow, people are passionate about their sleep. <laughs> hey, uh, Nikki, what's happening? I'm driving to work and listening to you guys as usual. Well, oh, well, thank you. We're honored. Thank you so much for listening. He's got cold feet. There's just no way. And why would he have this ring if he had no 
intention of proposing to her for another year and a half. That thing's going to rot by then. Well, so here's the interesting thing. We got a text message at triple nine double nine after we talked about it. And let me know what you think of this, Nikki. Um, okay. Because TJ believes him. TJ says it's possible. Uh, this, the, this, this is a number from Thornhill. It said uh, maybe that ring was from his last girlfriend. Oh, the plot thickens. Right? Maybe. Right. And he just got with it and now he's like oh god i gotta make up a story That's right i'm sticking with him on this i think maybe he had the ring put aside he's trying to find the perfect thing and maybe once he saw the ring on their finger he's like no 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 i could do better than this am i grasping that straws here because <laughs> no, as i'm I, talking i feel like i'm grasping that straws I mean, i'm on this guy's side though <laughs> dj i think you're wrong because if he could do better he should have done better from the beginning why like nikki she said yes while he was on ambient there's no doing better <laughs> Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. 99.9 Virgin Radio. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. You are the jury. Here is the case before you. Young man, young woman. Young man wakes up to find that the young woman he lives with, who he loves, has the ring on her finger that he's been hiding in his side table. Now, he says, I wasn't ready to do this for like another year and a half. But I do take Ambien, and crazy stuff does happen on Ambien. Does he? He's not trying to get out of the engagement, so that's an important detail. Does he have cold feet? Because he's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't remember it. Or do you believe him? Because people do crazy things on Ambien. Text is triple nine double nine or four one six eight seven two ninety nine ninety nine. What do you think? Well, I was just dropping my daughter off at school, and we, you know, we have two chats about. Um, what's going on the radio. Yes, tell us, what do you think? Cold feet, or do you believe him? Well, I think maybe he's on this drug, and she knows that he gets that way, like he forgets things, and maybe she found it and was tired of waiting. That is a really hot take. I love this. So maybe she thought, well, I saw it there when I was, I don't know, putting his underwear away or whatever, and thought, hey, the next time he... You know, goes on it and wake up in the morning and realize that, oh, crap. I don't want to believe that kind of evil exists. <laughs> I'm not ready to accept that that could be a thing. <laughs> well, sometimes people want to get married and they don't want to wait anymore. Who knows how long she's been waiting and... You're bringing up a lot of good points, many of which are terrifying, <laughs> but they're all very good points. Yeah. Well, I have daughters. So I have to think. Does that mean before you drop them off at school, you lock the doors of the van and said, listen, girls, if you ever get yourself in a relationship and you find the guys taking heavy sleeping medication, <laughs> don't lie about an engagement. We ask you to be the jury. Man wakes up, finds his girlfriend with his engagement ring for her on, although he never says it was for her. He said, I was going to wait a year and a half longer, maybe even get her a better engagement ring, but I was on Ambien and crazy stuff does happen with that sleep medication. We wanted to know whether you thought he was having cold feet or Ambien really did help him propose to his girlfriend. Producer Jesse, based on the calls and the texts, what has the jury of Toronto decided? I'm a little concerned for our listeners because the uh -oh. majority believe the ambient. Wow. Yeah. Does that mean I win? You win. Yeah! <laughs> most important thing! <laughs> Here's a good text message at triple nine double nine. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> True. Thank you from the 289. Trending's up next. This is the Virgin Morning Show with Adam Wilde and TJ. Virgin Mornings. With What's Trending. And this is What's Trending right now. We're number one. We're number one. We're number one of the worst cities in Canada for bed bugs. Yay! No, oh, that's bad. Yeah, Toronto just got named the worst city in Canada for bed bugs. Not the top of a list you want to be on, but still number one, baby. We are a lot bigger than other cities, too. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? We kind of be the, the most of everything you would think. Hey, don't take this victory away from us. There's no <laughs> asterisks with this, Adam. <laughs> uh, another news, Alicia Keys will host the Grammys. Uh, it was rumored last week that they might go with no host because I don't know if you've been following the news lately, but hosts of TV shows have been getting into a lot of trouble lately. Mm -hmm. So they thought maybe it would be the best if they didn't. Looks like Alicia Keys got the nod. And Do you think they'll think bring up some of her old tweets too? Just to oh. <laughs> The internet loves to drag people, so maybe. Uh, and that's what's trending. Um, wild party at Pineapple Beach. We need to fill that first VIP standby spot for today, Sarah. Hi. Oh, my God. I'm in Right now. What happened to you? No, you guys called. Oh, oh, we thought you touched an exposed cable or something. 
<laughs> no, no, I was literally just listening to you guys. The number came on. I normally don't answer. I answered, and I'm just... So surprised. I think we come up as not Virgin Radio on uh, on on your call display, right? Yeah, it's some random number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was enjoying the conversation you guys just had, and I agree. I really like that girl's take that the girl tricks the guy. Ooh, it's, a, it's a terrifying thought. That's the third thing that we never thought of. But what we do want to talk to you about is not ambient. It is you in Antigua on Pineapple Beach. Congratulations! Oh hey, God, you just got on the standby list. Awesome. Thank you so much. So tomorrow morning, 7 o'clock, make sure you don't take your Ambien. Because uh, <laughs> we're going to be calling. You're one of five people who has the opportunity to win the trip tomorrow. Congratulations. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. And if you want to be like Sarah, your next code word to get on the Virgin Radio VIP standby list, 11 a.m. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. 2019. You don't need your resolutions yet. University professors are saying, no, 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 no. Wait till March. You need to figure out what you want to do with this year yet. Future use problem. Exactly. That doesn't sound like a today Adam problem. <laughs> That's a March Adam problem. Um, but we, we do think that, you know, maybe it's time to take a look at our instincts on a first date. And these are important because sometimes you get roped into a second and third date and all of a sudden it's date 10 and you're like, I really have never liked you for the last nine dates. Why am I here? <laughs> it's happened, right? Uh, and so... There are first date red flags that I think that we should be able to put out there and kind of know, like, these are red flags. Recognize it, own it. Even if you sort of like the person, it's a red flag, red flag, red flag, don't do it. Right? Absolutely. This is something I'm definitely focusing on the, on the new year because I've had a tendency to ignore some red flags for me, and it's got me in some pretty sticky situations. But our friends over at Huffington Post put up uh, what they believe are six red flags for first dates. Uh, if they badmouth their ex... That's a bad one. That is bad. Yeah. That's such, it's so distasteful. Even even if they were terrible, don't need to know about it on the first date. Devil's advocate, though. though like, why are you asking about an ex? I guess all maybe, I guess it could go if Maybe they just bring it up. Them. Yeah, that's a fair point, too. Uh, number two, if they only talk about themselves, they might just be nervous. But if it's an ongoing thing, they're probably not worth it. And they almost definitely have a big ego. They're rude to the serving staff. Like, if you're at a restaurant, that's a big that. one for me. Yeah, that's a no-go. can't no stand go. that. Yeah, they drink too much. You know, there's a fine line between having a couple drinks to listen you up and, you know, taking your shirt off at the bar and trying to go full cryo the ugly. Not a good idea. Uh, if they admit that they've ghosted on people before, this one's terrifying for me because I have said before, I don't mind the idea of ghosting in certain contexts. Uh, this is where you just stop talking to someone instead of breaking things off, of course. They said if they've done it before, there's a decent chance that they'll do it again. Well, I think in that situation, it's not the ghosting itself that's the issue. It's admitting to it. It's Because there's almost like a proud of that. Because you're trying to put your best mm. foot forward. It's like a job interview, right? Yeah. So if somebody is like, yeah, I've ghosted people, then you're like, yeah. I'll see you later. However, I don't know a single person that hasn't ghosted someone. The key is maybe not to be proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the best move. Don't walk in it. wearing a shirt that says, yeah, I've ghosted people exactly. before. Because exactly. one, getting that shirt made is expensive. And two, it's a ridiculous thing to wear on a date. The last thing on the list is if they seem bored. That's a big red flag. They might just be trying to play it cool. But if you get the impression that they're bored by you, don't waste any more time on them. Interesting. So here's the thing. We want to build on this list. We want to make additions to it because there's those there's those are six and they're solid. Yeah, they're great. But I think that we can add to it. And I'm going to go with one right now. And this may be unpopular, but I'm going to own it. Oh boy, here we go. If you lean in towards the end of the date and you guys want to kiss, right? Because a lot of people think kissing on the first date or whatever, and you don't like their smell, cut it. That is your that is your natural. That is your <laughs> body telling you. If you don't like, and I'm not talking about like, oh, you didn't like the, the type of mouthwash they used. If you don't like their BO smell, then it's not going to work. That is your body telling you naturally this person's not for you. Just to clarify too, Adam is a naturally sweaty guy, so he's allowed to say this. <laughs> this is very important to me. Yeah. So, this is your hill. We want to hear yours. Triple nine, double nine on the text or 416-872-9999. It's Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. Hey, we've been asking you about, we got this list from the Huffington Post. Basically... Red flags on the first date. There were six really good ones to start. We want you to add to the list. So what is yours? TJ, what are some of the texts? Text uh, from, to triple nine, double nine. My friend had a guy bring his gaming system to her place so he could play it after they hooked up and she went to bed. Yeah, bit of a red flag, I'd say. Yeah, so don't bring your PS4. Yeah, that's number seven on the list. Don't bring your gaming system on a date. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
Things Bring, that, bring Settlers of Catan instead. There you go. Yeah. It's Virgin Radio. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. A 99.9 Virgin Radio. Snow all over the city. It's in pockets. There's certain, yeah, we're looking at the MTO cameras, and like there's certain spots where it's dry, mostly north of the city. Downtown, it is snowing. Slick roads. Salter trucks have been out since 1 a.m., so just take it easy. And help us with this list. We've got this list of from the Huffington Post about first date red flags, and I think we need to tune our senses a little bit more. I think we're too forgiving on first dates and not picky enough. Totally agree. When these red flags come up, we're like, well, but they, you know, they like chicken and I like chicken, so we could have a second date. You know what I mean? You're looking for connections that yeah. aren't there and ignoring the, the big red flags. The big red flags, the yeah. ones that are like, hey, I'm terrible for you. And I they're like, terrible. no, 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 they like chicken. We can work <laughs> through this. TJ, give me a couple like examples that are already on the list. Uh, text from the 647. If when I drive to get a girl for a first date and she makes me wait longer than five minutes, that's my deal breaker. What are you, an Uber driver? Hmm. That's a... I don't know if I'd put that on the list. No, I I'm don't think sure. that's on the list. Uh, Liz, what's yours? If they leave their cell phone on the table with the face up. Ooh, you know what? I actually go to an effort to make sure I put my phone on silent and either face down or in my pocket on a date. And I make sure that they know this. I do it because I want to give the impression that, hey, I'm here for you. That you care. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's an it's an impression thing, but it's also an attention thing because half of 2018 and 2019 is run by social media. Totally. So, I mean, posts show up and... Everyone gets notifications, and it's just a distraction, and it makes them feel less important in the moment. You know, I think it's good practice for anybody at any time. When you're out for meals, like, Twitter can wait, man. It's just people being mad anyway. Yeah. You don't need to be on that. Plus, you normally text your friends being like, hey, I'm going out on a date right now. So, like, anyone yeah. who's really trying to get a hold of you, it doesn't matter. Uh, Unless you're a doctor, and then you probably need to leave your phone on. One more text? Yeah, I got another text from the 416. A big, a big red flag for me is someone checking out other people on the first date. Ooh. Looking around, making eye contact with other people. That's from Carmen. Man, how bad do you have to be? People go on some bad first dates. Oh, no kidding. I'm so That's sorry. Nice. It's Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. Hit us up, triple nine double nine on the text. This is Virgin Mornings with Adam Wilde and TJ. On 99.9 Virgin Radio. Compiling a list, or a list, not a disc, a list of first date red flags that you cannot ignore. Huffington Post kind of got us started with things like being rude to wait staff and bad-mouthing your ex. Drinking too much. Yeah, and it, listen, I'm all about, this is sort of the age of accepting people for who they are, and I get that. But that doesn't mean they're a great match f- for you, right? Totally. You could accept someone and their faults or whatever, but you have to decide whether or not these faults are for you. And some of these red flags are red flags that are kind of universal. TJ, you got some texts? Yeah, Royce texted us from the 416 saying, Making plans too fast is a red flag for me. Oh. I got invited to his sister's wedding in 16 months. Okay, that's a little quick. That's a little bit aggressive there, a friend. Little, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, Cassandra, tell us, what is it for you? Am- no ambition. Yes, love that. Ooh. Now, how do well, you tell on the first date? Well, you you, you got to bring it up in conversation. So you're like, where do you want to see yourself in like five years? And if they say like, oh, as of right now, I'm not like 100% sure. Or I don't have any like goals right now. Or if it's unrealistic ambition. So like if they want, if they played football in in their younger, year, younger years and they're like, oh, I want to play football. And you're like, okay, so what's your backup? And they go, oh, nothing. That one sounds like a personal story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Did they make it? No. <laughs> Imagine they oh, did. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. Virgin Mornings. With What's Trending. And this is what's trending right now. Hey, remember last weekend when they said we were supposed to get some snow and then we didn't? Yes. And then the weekend before that, we were supposed to get some snow and then we didn't? And I was blamed for all of it because I brought it up on the show. It was 100% your fault. Turns out... We might get snow again this weekend. And if we don't, once again, it's Adam Wilde's fault. <laughs> Online, they're saying we might definitely, for sure, potentially well, get we're getting hit it with now. up to 15 centimeters of snow by the weekend. And by the way, don't let the up to fool you, okay? It can be anywhere between 0 and 15 when you say up to. That's right. Hey, I'm up to six and a half feet tall. Hey, I'm up to my neck in pudding right now. Zero to one, zero to full, right? That makes sense. Anyway, if it doesn't snow, you can tweet him at Adam W Y L D E on Twitter. You can send him all your hatred. If you want to say anything nice, you can tweet me too at On Air TJ. Uh, also, 
Did you see the new Spider-Man trailer yesterday? I did, and it looks really good. It looks really, really good. Uh, people are really, really pumped about it. Spider-Man Far From Home, currently set for release on the 5th of July, 2019. If you haven't seen it yet, you can check it out on our Twitter feed, at Virgin Radio T.O. Tom Holland does a phenomenal job as Spider-Man. We actually, our producer, uh, Spaghetti Mike Sullivan, loves comic books. Oh, yeah. And uh, constantly talks about how he thinks this is the best Spider-Man. That's interesting because, you know, that when that second Sp- I mean, Spider-Man 2 with Tobey Maguire came out, yeah. everybody called it at that time the best superhero movie ever. And if you watch it today... Tobey? Really? I know. Not the third one where he was emo. <laughs> the second one where he's <laughs> still cool. Um, that, that one stands up. It's still very good. So that's interesting for a real comic book fan like him to say that. Yeah, it's great. Classic Spaghetti Mike always talking comic books. Also, I'm not sure that Topher Grace and Tobey Maguire aren't the same person. Another car conversation worth having. Good question. Did you watch the new Gillette commercial? It's I all did. about targeting toxic masculinity. And here's the thing. They put it out yesterday. Everyone praised them for it. And then because the internet is the internet, people started giving them a really hard time for it. And now everyone's defending it again because it just oh. does the internet circle. If you want to hate anything, Twitter is a good place to go. Yeah. Like if you, Or if you have a favorite thing, you can find someone who hates it on Twitter. But I, I got to read this tweet, and I retweeted this on my account because I think it's so funny, okay? Yeah. It's from uh, a guy named John Lurie, and he says, If you are a man who is upset about the Gillette commercial, you should smile more. You're so much prettier when you smile. Oh, I love it. (laughs) Uh, It's also 22 degrees right now in Antigua. And a quick reminder that your next code word is coming at 11 o'clock with Luke. At Elrod Radio. Taking over. Luke Rodriguez, everybody. Have a good one. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It's Virgin Radio.